Good morning. <coughs> Thank you for uh, the opportunity. Uh, actually, this feels like home. I mean, we've been doing this for uh, so many years. I think it was a gap of two, three years, but now doing it again. So uh, always a pleasure to meet uh, Sunbird, friends, X-Type. Uh, uh, so what I'm going to talk about today uh, is some stories of uh, Sunbird adoption. So uh, of course, Diksha has been uh, one of the biggest successes. But uh, what I'm going to sh share today is some stories beyond Diksha. And in fact, uh, even before we get into case studies, what I'd like to talk about is okay. what I'd like to talk about is go a little deeper into what is sunbird. So what we see typically is sunbird is, is just a word sunbird. But beyond sunbird, I mean, you can treat sunbird almost as the tip of the iceberg. It's, it's a lot more than just one uh, thing. So it's actually a set of building blocks. Uh, it's not one software, but maybe a couple of dozen different software, each of them doing their own work. Each of them can uh, do various different things in their own. So you know, in each of them is in by themselves a complete software. So, so this is, like I said, I mean, uh, at least a dozen things there, a few more in the making. Uh, so I'll be doing a detailed session on building blocks a little later, but what I need to touch upon is something very quick. So uh, we, we looked at, typically we're looking at Sunbird Ed especially as a learning platform. So uh, in any learning platform, if you see a typical user journey, there is content to be looked at, there is enrollments happening, and there is progress coming out of enrollments. So in Sunbird, all these are, uh, all these are being built by different building blocks. So uh, Sunbird knowledge is just responsible for creating the content. So any content, courses, PDFs, videos, all of that is all, just that is knowledge. Uh, then we have learn, which is responsible for the user management. It's responsible for your enrollment, progress updates, all of that. And then there's also uh, observe, which is keeping on tracking all the events happening, all the data that is getting gathered uh, by user activities. And then there's a few sort of inquiry. So what I'd like to kind of, I mean, what I'd like to make a point is Sunbird is not just one monolithic software. It is actually pieces of software. And uh, like I said, knowledge, learn, all these can be interoperable. So you don't need inquiry, for example, to use knowledge. You could use knowledge in a variety of different use cases, uh, which I'll come to in a moment. So with that, I'd like to talk about uh, roughly five different use cases of how Sunbird is being leveraged in different uh, domains. First, I'll talk about is a nonprofit that we work with called Educate Girls. So, Educate Girls, uh, they're a nonprofit focused on uh, making girls in our society finish their education and kind of live a uh, live a more uh, respectable life. And they work with so through a team of volunteers, they work with girls in the remotest parts of India um, that you probably can't imagine. And they go there, they conduct workshops, and they ensure that at least these girls get to finish their 10 class exams. Uh, so what they do is basically uh, have volunteers conduct camps in these villages and as part of the camps these volunteers teach the girls stuff that they would need to pass their 10 class exams. So what we did with Sunbird uh, and in this case we were primarily using Sunbird Ed and Sunbird RC is to give a platform that can let them enroll these volunteers. The volunteers can identify uh, these adolescent girls who who uh, wish to finish their exams, and then use a Sunbird Ed-based solution, a mobile app, to deliver the content to these uh, girls. So in all, uh, this solution so far has helped us create a platform. And we have, we already have over 500 volunteers who've enrolled, and uh, they in turn have enrolled 7,500 girls. And now they're, I mean, now the program is at a phase where they're now using Sunbird Ed to get content, to go into these villages and use it to really uh, teach these girls. So this has been one of, I mean, one of one of the very uh, interesting case studies and use cases of Sunbird. Uh, then we have something more from the urban side. Uh, <clears throat> so NIUA, uh, NIUA is basically uh, uh, association under the Ministry of uh, Housing and Urban Affairs. And uh, they are like a think tank which work with or which kind of groom uh, leaders who will solve urban problems. And uh, these are leaders, these could be leaders from uh, different municipalities, uh, 
you know, non-civil people. But the intention here uh, was to build a platform that can connect all these uh, think tanks, all these practitioners in the uh, urban development field and give them a platform that they can come to uh, share content. Uh, so for example, they could do any, uh, any, any case studies, any uh, best practices from Bangalore could be probably shared with uh, people from other states, other cities. So it's an online platform where these urban practitioners can collaborate, share content. Uh, again, uh, again, a very interesting Sunbird Ed success story. So the platform right now has uh, roughly 400 municipalities, municipal corporations across India, and uh, roughly 2,000 plus people uh, working, contributing. And one of the uh, one of the interesting areas of this uh, platform, I mean NIU especially, is peer-to-peer uh, -peer sharing. So a lot of the content. So in Diksha and in a lot of places, typically what we've seen is that the content is created by experts and delivered to uh, the beneficiaries. But in case of NIUA, uh, a lot of it is peer content. So uh, people from a city create content, and the content is being used, consumed by other cities folks, and vice versa. So a lot of, uh, lot of sharing content is happening here. Uh, this is again powered by Ed. Now this is another uh, very interesting use case. So a year or maybe a little more uh, back, uh, there was a concept called FRAC that came out. So FRAC, I mean, so we are used to, I mean, in the e-learning space, we're used to competencies, skills, all of that. Uh, but a year or two back, uh, this was also kind of introduced in the government area, where uh, the FRAC term was coined. So FRAC basically is a framework for roles, uh, activities, and competencies. And this was made for uh, the civil servant. So basically, people from all the departments, people from uh, various ministries, uh, how how do we now start looking at their growth? How do we start looking at their uh, moving from one department to the other? So in IT, we know, right? I mean, OK, I'm a Python developer. I need to learn ABCD of Python. Then I can move out. If I'm a DevOps guy, I can learn something. And then so there is a little uh, organized way of looking at the competencies in this side. But in government, this was kind of all over the place. So that's when they came out with FRAC. And FRAC is supposed to be now a framework where uh, all these civil servants across all these departments are now, uh, I mean, the content is tagged against FRAC, the job roles, the job opportunities are all tagged against, tagged against FRAC. So now it is very, I mean, I wouldn't say easy, but now it's a little more organized to kind of uh, figure out for a particular role. So let's say there's somebody uh, in the urban department they need some skills. They need some kind of competencies to be able to perform that job. So the FRAC framework now is able to define that, tag it against that particular role. And then when somebody new has to come in, they can actually figure out, OK, if I want to move into an urban department, do I have the required uh, capabilities according to FRAC so that I can apply for that uh, role? So this has been enabled by a building block called knowledge. So knowledge lets you create uh, a pretty phenomenal taxonomy uh, using the framework and uh, I mean all, all the capabilities that knowledge has. So this has been used to power the FRAC, uh, FRAC framework. Now this is a, again, this is a case study, this is a use case purely of the knowledge building block. So what, I mean, like I talked, uh, it needn't always be Sunbird Ed as a whole that is being uh, given as a solution. In this case, we are seeing purely knowledge as a building block is the solution. Uh, now, this is another interesting use case, uh, people from the community. So observe is a building block of Sunbird that can take in uh, telemetry, any actions that people do. All of that data is taken into uh, by the observe building block. And there is uh, there is a pretty uh, elaborate data pipeline that uh, enriches this data and makes the data available for uh, reporting and all sorts of uh, querying. So with observe, these folks were able to really offer a massive uh, improvement on the existing data uh, data uh, infrastructure of the customer. So what they were able to do is that they were able to use Observe and ensure that these folks are able to process 300 times more data at just a tenth of the cost. So if you see, that's roughly 3,000 times more uh, value delivered by this building block. So again, a use case where, <coughs> again, a use case where So purely one building block has been at the center of the solution than 
the entire ad being uh, out there and uh, like to i mean the last one that i want to talk about is uh, so now this is another this is in the works this is coming so this is another uh, platform that is coming out uh, so like diksha has been built for the teachers and the students of india uh, digital green is now working with the ministry of agriculture and creating a platform for the farmers of india so in fact uh, digital green has been working with farmers for a couple of decades now creating videos in local languages uh, working with farmers to kind of help them improve their processes working with uh, something called as the extension worker uh, ecosystem which are basically progressive farmers working with them to create content that is helpful for uh, farmers to kind of improve the way of working improve their decision making and now with sunbird uh, so today digital green has been kind of working with roughly 4000 of these extension workers and they've been re able to reach out to 25 lakh uh, farmers now with this digital platform that we are helping uh, build them they can accelerate the content creation they can kind of accelerate the content distribution and with this the goal is to reach the entire 2 lakh plus uh, extension worker ecosystem that is there and uh, roll out the content roll out the ability to ability for farmers to access the content across the country so that's been that's been another uh, sunbird ad and observe uh, story that is unfolding right now as we speak so that's it i mean th these are i mean just wanted to show uh, some examples of how ad or some other building blocks uh, have been used and been kind of deployed independently to create solutions not just uh, in the learning space but kind of outside as well so that's a quick thing from me uh, and one one thing that i want to definitely highlight is i mean all these projects all these five six stories uh, i mean great stuff is that a lot of the people who built it are right here in this room so across the room you'll see people who have built, built these kind of uh, solutions at scale so i mean uh, people new to this ecosystem make sure you kind of talk to them and make the most of the next two days and interact with them to uh, kind of get started on the journey to contribute to sunbird and dpgs in, uh, dpgs in general so thanks thanks for uh, having me here